because Jan Cemetery is the oldest British and Protestant cemetery in Spain. Therefore, that makes it a very peculiar place and a very interesting piece of British history overseas. As Jan Cemetery is one of the hidden gems of the city of Tarragona, and its story starts in 1849, when the small enclosure that we see today was bought by the British Crown in order to give proper burial to people that came from other faiths and other beliefs. That is because until 1931 in Spain, it was forbidden to bury Protestants, Jewish, so the people that were foreigners that weren't, that weren't Catholic had to be buried somewhere else. The first burial that was recorded into the cemetery is John Bridgman's, the British Vice Consul that arranged the purchase of the cemetery. However, there are some stones that are dated back to the early 18th centuries in the final period of the War of Spanish Succession. In the early 18th century, some British troops came ashore and started improving the defences of Tarragona and thus they built the Fortín de la Reina and the Fortín de San Jordi. The fort of the Queen, named after Queen Anne Stuart and the fort of St George, being the patron saint of England. Ever since the Roman period, the layout of the city was divided in two. On one part we could find the higher part, encircled by safer walls. And on the other hand, down south we would find the waterfront, the place where the port would be. It will suffice to say that Tarragona was a very strategic port. And therefore the port needed to be well protected as well as the higher part of the city. So. Some walls were built along the medieval and the start of the modern period. One of the things that we can also find out in this cemetery is the stories of the people that rest here. Sometimes cemeteries are seen like very grim and dark places. That is kind of true. but. Some other times, cemeteries give us some insight and some perspective on how life was. In this case, we will delve into those stories. Most of the graves belong to sailors, as this was a very demanding way of life. Disease, drowning, falling of the hold, alcoholism, mutiny and fighting were some of the ways to die as a sailor. The sea didn't make any distinctions of age either and many left this world being quite young. Let's talk about the numbers. There are more than 90 people buried within Lzjan Cemetery, as you're seeing in the screen. And of course, they came from many different countries of origin. There are 51 British and Commonwealth subjects from different parts of the United Kingdom, Canada and Australia. And even though popularly, Lzjan Cemetery is often called the British Cemetery, there are 42 people that aren't British. The largest groups being American, German and French. In addition to these numbers, you could easily sum up an unknown number of British troops from the War of Succession and the Napoleonic Wars that might have been transferred from their previous burial to Osjan Cemetery. The newborn children, despite being born in Tarragona, are accounted from the same country as their parents. In this place we can find some peculiar symbols, such as the square and compass, a symbol often linked to Freemasonry. Freemasonry is a fraternal organization that seeks the betterment of humankind. Masons hold their meetings in utter secrecy. As a result, some branches of the popular culture have come to regard the Masons as plotters, as some kind of agents of a great conspiracy to rule the world. In any ways, Freemasonry was a very widespread social reality in the late 19th century and the early 20th century in Europe and America. And thus the graves, they felt proud of their beliefs and they didn't hesitate to put a cross next to a square and compass. 
Unfortunately, in 1940, Freemasonry was outlawed during the first years of General Franco's dictatorship. The design of the cemetery is very uncommon for a British cemetery. That is because the tombs are set in niches instead of being normal graves. The tombs are dug into a wall and then the coffin is placed there. Later, a lid or a tablet is placed in order to seal the tomb. Even if it doesn't have the charm a normal grave should have, it still helps to save up some space in such a small enclosure. And now, before our final story, I will show you some of these tablets that called our attention as a way to see the messages, the inscriptions and their meanings. Once again, a British ship has been bombed in Spanish waters. The SS Stanwell was lying in Tarragona Harbour, flying the British colours and the non-intervention pennant. It was barely dawn, her crew were asleep below. Then came a squadron of warplanes, two bombs scored direct hits. The fireman was killed instantly, the Danish non-intervention observer died later in hospital, four others of the crew are wounded. We may all be set on keeping out of war, but war is no respecter of neutrality. Ask these men, their grim faces give you the answer. In 1938, the Spanish Civil War took its toll on the crew members of the steamships Stanwell and Thorpness. The Thorpness was bombed during an air raid in January 1938, and the Stanwell was also damaged two months later. A total of 10 crew members fell and found their resting place in Tarragona. far from home and within a war that had nothing to do with them. Like the soldiers that came and died at Tarragona more than 300 years ago. Like those who fought with the Spanish to free Spain from Napoleon's grasp. Being part of something and yet never being able to truly belong. Those were some of the stories that can be told. There are many, many more meaningless or meaningful, big or small, the final stop was the same.